Welcome to Verify This, a podcast brought to you by Kindatis. We deliver bespoke identity and access management solutions leveraging the Microsoft Entra product family. Our solutions are designed to simplify onboarding, enhance security, and boost business efficiency for clients globally. Throughout the series, we'll connect with leading experts across the industry to bring you insight on all things digital identity. Hear about trending issues, lessons learned, and priorities for the future with an identity verification and authentication. Of giving a 50% uh, offer to college enrolled students, but how do you how do you verify a college student online? How do you establish that loyalty? How do you establish that emotional connection between a brand and a consumer? Welcome to our latest episode of Verify This. I'm your host, Lucy McNeil, Product Marketing Lead at Candatis. And today we have the pleasure of being joined by Harry Laller, Vice President of Enterprise Strategy and Corporate Development at Sheer ID. Harry has an extensive background in product management and development, delivering complex SaaS solutions to global enterprise, and now works on strategic business opportunities and partnerships with Sheer ID. Sheer ID is the global leader in identity verification for commerce, working with leading brands driving revenue in consumer communities around the world. Today, we're going to be talking about driving brand loyalty through hyper-personalization, signifying the important role that one's identity can play in unlocking new experiences and finding the technology to facilitate that. So welcome, Harry. Thank you, Lucy. It's great to be here. We're very excited to have you on, and and I'm really excited for, for the conversation that we're about to have because I said this when I chatted to Dr. Keith, look, you know, what Sheer ID does and what Condatus does isn't necessarily like for like. Technology might not be like for like, but but fun- the fundamentals of what we do and what we want to deliver for uh, communities, consumers, uh, anyone involved um, is very aligned. And I think what Sheer ID is doing is, is really quite cool and relevant um, because it's taking something that might be kind of well understood, but taking it up a level. So I'm really keen to chat to you today. Uh, with that in mind, I'd love for you to just give us an introduction on you, your experience, you know, your your work at Share ID, just to give our listeners a bit of an intro. Sure. Thank you, Lucy. Um, first, when I joined Sheer ID, golly, I think it was about 12 years ago. Uh, it was our co-founders company, uh, Jake Weatherly and David Shear and nine other people, 10 other people uh, who had an idea uh, that we wanted to execute. We believed in really strongly. And prior to that, I had never been a small company person or startup person at all. I never considered myself an entrepreneur. I had been in, in very large companies um, helping bring new technologies to the market. So when I first started out, uh, uh, I don't know if your listeners know, but Telex was the thing. And Email was now being brought on on the way. So I was selling email. And then at a company called MCI, I helped commercialize the internet, uh, working with Vint Cerf and his team, moved over to all internet services, uh, commercializing those. Then at a company called Network Solutions, we introduced web-based services, uh, this new thing called a website for businesses so they could start marketing their services online. And that was new at that time. And one of the, when I was in business development, one of the challenges we always had in partnerships was how does our company know the person who's signing up for a discount really is who they say they are? And are we just writing down our revenue? And so when the idea came to me from Jake and David that says we could actually verify that somebody is an employee of, let's say, Boeing or Condatis, uh, where they really don't have a website now, uh, and we could verify that and therefore protect that margin and give a special benefit to that person. So when I heard of uh, Sheer ID, I just jumped on it and said, you bet, I, I'd love to join that company. And uh, 12 years later, and here I am. Yeah, it sounds like you very much had a, a knack for the new and latest, greatest thing as to what was kind of coming out within within um, the time. So, yeah, there's a theme there, I think, Harry. <laughs> None would, Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's really interesting because 
we think about, you know, targeting and, and driving loyalty and, and leveraging the latest technology, how does Sheer ID do that to drive loyalty? It's it's I mentioned it in the intro, it's it's a global leader in identity verification for commerce. So how in I'm sure it's more complicated. So as best you can tell me how it all works. Yeah, great, great question. And it really started out when uh, Jake and David were at a company selling software. And this software had uh, applicability to anybody who wanted to start a business or expand their business. Uh, but universities also had this in their business school courses. And the software was sold at a 50% discount in the bookstore at the university. And so students would show up, their teacher said, buy the software because we're going to learn about uh, this aspect of business. They showed their ID and that was pretty easy. When Amazon started selling software online, uh, then people started buying software online and just downloading it to their computer. Uh, Jake and David were in the situation that they wanted to take advantage of giving a 50% uh, offer to college enrolled students. But how do you how do you verify a college student online? Uh, that was really the the problem, and it there was no solution. So that's really how the company began. And uh, so how does it work? It's it's pretty simple, and I think to your listeners, it's going to sound a lot like what decentralized identity is uh, accomplishing, and Condata certainly is doing for your clients. The it really works that there's two there's the benefit that we give our clients and our clients are primarily corporations with really well-known brands uh, and then how it works is our platform so for our clients we help them acquire new customers and we give those customers a reason to love brands the, you know a reason to be loyal to the brands they love and then to continue a relationship with them so that's the magic that's the benefit we provide to our clients and we do that by not necessarily verifying who the individual is meaning are you really lucy mcneil are you really harry lawler but really who do you identify as what's important to you at this time of your life you know, as a college student, as a teacher, as a medical professional, uh, and what what does that what pressures does that mean for you on a daily basis, and how could our clients solve those? So when we say identity verification for commerce, it's how do we take a brand that our client has, match it with the needs of a of a member of a community, and then put verification in there that says only people like you can get this special benefit and what we do is we go to those organizations that issue the credential to use those words so these are people who have verified that you are a nurse and able to practice you are a doctor and able to practice this specialty you are an enrolled college student you are a member of the military so forth and we get access to that data for verification purposes around the world. So ShareID is in over 100 countries, and we have access to over 200,000 sources of, of credentials that these organizations have and can issue. And then we go to the individual during the purchase flow and say, do you want this benefit? They say, yes, I do they enter in just a minor pieces of information we present that to the credential issuer and say does harry lawler this is simplifying it go to the university of edinburgh and they say yes he does or no he doesn't yeah and i think i think actually on the sheer id website they say 65% of consumers who belong to an identity-based community say they feel more emotionally connected to brands that give them an exclusive offer. I, I mentioned in the introduction, giving offers and rewards isn't necessarily new, but I guess, is it fair to say that what Sheer ID is, is doubling down on is making that more explicit to make people feel you know, to make those consumers feel like they belong to more of an identity, whether that's through, 
yeah, as you say, the medical field or being a veteran or in the military, it's it's almost making it more ring fence to make it even more exclusive. And I think you've probably seen that in the, the the performance results that your customers have seen. I think is that fair to say what she already is trying to differentiate to what's happening at the moment in its most basic form. That's right. It 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 the the problem that we're solving for both the consumer as well as our our clients is how do you establish that loyalty? How do you establish that emotional connection between a brand and the consumer? And that's not easy to do. Uh, I mean, we all talk like it is, but consumers are a fickle bunch and we're very cynical, right? So how do I have true loyalty to a brand? And what we've allowed our brands to do that I think is unique to uh, consumers is ask them for permission to, to verify personal information. And when the consumer gives that permission, there's a level of trust that is established that's pretty unique, right? So rarely do you have brands asking you for information with your explicit permission, and rarely do you give it back. It's usually forced, right? We have to give information or we're required to give information. So when that brand asks for your permission to give for your information, you give it because you want the benefit. You've already established trust that doesn't normally take place in any commercial transaction. Then when the when the brand actually gives you benefits based on that information you gave them, so you know you gave it to her uh, for a reason, and now the brand is recognizing you with personal information, that builds brand loyalty in a way that's very different than any other type of marketing campaign. Uh, that we have seen and our customers, our, our, our clients have seen. And it really creates a magical bond between the brand and the individual because let's say if you're a teacher, then you, back to school is a very big deal for you and your life is upside down and you're trying to prepare for your students and for a brand to be able to recognize that and then provide benefits to help you through that uh, is where brand loyalty really is elevated, in our opinion, to a different level. Yeah, I think the theme came up in my discussion with Jillian and even with Alistair, with the with Alistair's discussion being obviously more and more, we as individuals are becoming more well-versed in how much data am I wanting to share with you? What are you doing with that data? And I feel like that's only been a fairly recent thing. I think I said this in in the episode with Alistair is that you know there's more adverts on the radio about looking out for for these um you know these fraudsters. So there needs to be a very valid reason to to develop that trust and share that that data and information with a brand. And I think that's where we're seeing organizations can benefit more where you're actually using the, the your data at your disposal for greater purpose for your customers. You're not just capturing it to say, we've got it if we want to use it. It's really being like, we're going to use this for good. We know you give your information to loads of people, but we promise we'll make this worth your while to make your life easier. And I think earlier on, you you noted just the scale at what sort of data there is. So uh, if we think about that verification piece, how is security and or fraud considered in all of this? I did see that um, Headspace just cut their fraud by around 40%. So how do you balance the experience you know the the reducing the barrier to entry versus making sure all that information is protected and not at risk. Yeah, that's a that's a very big issue for Sheer ID and our clients. And as you can imagine, if you were a fraudster and there is a gate or an eligibility verification for a benefit, then they're going to try to figure out how to get that and avoid the verification. Um, and so. Uh, Fraud has a, uh, in our business, has a number of different names. It could be, you know, it's called friendly fraud. Uh, hey, we're just getting a, a discount. Nobody's losing an eye. You know, it's not, a, what's the big deal? Or discount fraud. Uh, and then, you know, the, the professional fraud. But it's a big deal to our, our clients. And 
the scale of this fraud, Lucy, could be quite large. In fact, one of our clients saved 30 million US dollars in a single year by eliminating discount abuse at their store at the point of sale um, wow. because of our uh, fraud checks and enforcement of their eligibility criteria that hadn't been enforced uh, before. So that friendly fraud uh, of somebody giving their friend or their neighbor a discount really adds up and therefore diminish the value of that, uh, that, that as well. So uh, that's one aspect of, of enforcing fraud, but really what, because we're in the business of helping our clients attract new customers, we have to be cognizant of the friction that we introduce uh, during the verification and balance that with the, the fraud needs. Uh, so we've, we started off, it, it can't, I'm not saying it's been an easy journey, but I think we're pretty good at it now by balancing the friction we introduce uh, while adding progressive fraud checks for, you know, potential bad guys. And these fraud checks really on our platform come in three forms. One is we see the signals from the data exhaust as somebody who is attempting to, to verify. And we have, because our business is global and the scale is in tens of millions of verifications each month, we know a likely bad guy versus a, a likely person who is really eligible and, and wanting to in that. So we're able to, to have an idea before the verification takes place, whether or not this could be a bad guy or a, a, a person, a real person wanting, not a bot, wanting to get a, a benefit. Then once we do verify an individual, we have uh, security provisions in place where we apply limitations or our clients can apply limitations to the benefits they issue. So if Lucy McNeil uh, says, I want a free ice cream cone and does that 30 times a day, it's probably Lucy's not really eating 30 ice cream cones. Uh, so we'll be able to limit that uh, to a number of times a, a single person verifies on our platform or at a single uh, client of ours. Uh, during a period of time. Um, and then if we, if our client wants to know, is Lucy really Lucy, we provide uh, identification uh, verification where we actually scan your government issued credential and compare it to a selfie to make sure that the person who entered the information is actually the person receiving it. So those mm -hmm. are the, the three areas that we, we have for fraud control. It's it's interesting because it's it's what we're seeing evolving even more to, sort of with your note on the signals. That's something we're seeing Microsoft bring out a lot more in their entry suite where it's looking at, okay, how can AI start to identify funny trends that are going on, unusual activity, to then even the degree of that know your customer piece. And and it's like all these things have existed right now, but we're starting to see more of a convergence, you know, and also an example where not one fraud solution works. You might need a thread of techniques. And and I think you made the good point, especially with Sheer ID's example, where the scale of imp impact and implications can be quite grand because you could go from, as you say, an ice cream all the way up to, I don't even, let's blue sky thinking a full college tuition or something like that where the risk levels are are greater and about balancing the as you said friction versus really what could this cost the the, the client or the customer or the organization that's it's, right so i think really that giving our client the control of how much friction they want to introduce to protect their offer is the is the key there and so we have clients who give thousands of dollars worth of software to college enrolled students or the teachers who teach a course. They want them to use the software. And then after they graduate, uh, you pay, pay for it in full. And so when they're giving away thousands of dollars worth, they really want to know, are you an enrolled student and are you who you say you are? Uh, and that's very different than a company that's giving 10% off a bag of barbecue briquettes uh, on the 4th of July or a free soda at uh, Subway uh, to the to a teacher. But 
Um, we, we don't want to enforce that. We give our tools to our clients and we share our best practices. They, they manage that to their business objectives. Uh, but what I, what I love about Condatis and the whole environment that you're in is we mostly speak to marketers. We're, we're helping them get their message out to a certain community and then engender loyalty to them. And if they knew during the purchase that Lucy is really Lucy, that takes all of these issues off the table and solves a, ma a potential massive problem that a lot of people spend time on. And that could be eliminated by, um, you know, introducing verified identity into commerce. Yeah, I think more and more we're seeing the perception change on identity and access management or verification, identity verification as a, a topic where traditionally it might be it's a thing we kind of just need to have because we just need to have it. But rather we can actually really be benefit our business outcomes and, and use it to influence revenue. And I think that the, we're at that tipping point where the, the power of it's really coming to light. You um, explained a lot of really interesting examples, you know, as an aside, not related to identity verification as a marketer. I'm thinking, wow, I would never, you know, that's so great that that, that software solution is actually offering that to students. That's a really big offering. That's not your traditional two for one coupon, you know, and so that's an interest of interest to me as a marketer. But what it brings the, the conversation back to and what your ID calls out is streamlining customer data to enrich customer profiles. So this is really of interest, especially it's a lot of what we're thinking about at Kindatis and, and we're thinking about it in the context of how do we look at decentralized identity, for example, to enrich profiles and preferences. It's not just using identity for a one and done outcome solution based on some of the things you've shared. You know, what could using customer profiles and preferences at a greater scale unlock possibility wise across industries. Yeah. And I think your first conversation with Jillian really gave a lot of fantastic examples of the benefits of preferences and updating and having a, a profile in somebody's loyalty program. Um, and what sheer ID does is build on that foundation where if there's a loyalty program a customer a client of ours has how could that loyalty program be enhanced by recognizing who that person is their identity is table stakes particularly in travel and hospitality it's required uh, but how could you further bond with that individual during their their journey so an example that i that i like to use and that i was fortunate enough i'm a corporate weenie, so I hardly ever get out to uh, talk to clients, but there's this one airline uh, client of ours who has a frequent flyer program and they uh, don't have, or they can't recognize students in, them, uh, in, that, in that program. And they know that students have a lot of unique needs. Uh, so uh, they travel on uh, the drop of a dime, or if they travel uh, study abroad, they need to travel long distances and bring a lot of luggage because they're going to be at one location for a long time, or they may want to pop home on a special occasion or just to see uh, mom and dad. Um, um, so they wanted to be able to identify who they are. So they set up a verification program that you'll get special benefits as a student um, in order to uh, and if you verify your your um, your status with them, and what I liked about how there you know there was uh, certain benefits that they provide, but really what was meaningful to them is, let's say you are a student and you go to the lounge. Well, for me, an an airline lounge is a quiet place to be to get work done, or uh, to have a quick bite, or just to chill out and. Uh, you know, have quiet. Well, that's not what college students want. <laughs> no. And so when they were thinking of uh, an exclusive lounge that's only available to traveling uh, college students and have activities in there that appeal to them, well, geez, the next time if I was a college enrolled student and I was traveling, who would I think of to want to book my ticket with? 
uh, it would be an airline that would offer those type of benefits to me above and beyond the normal loyalty program uh, that they have. So that's kind of the, the power that we've seen, the creativity that uh, marketers have as well. Yeah, I think you're right. It's it's the layering. It's that example of a profile. It's this is, okay, who you as a person, your name and all that sort of stuff maybe isn't necessarily relevant to us. But the fact we know that you are a teacher, um, but also I don't know, you know, the, it could cross over and be part, you could be a teacher and and you could be an alum as well, or, <laughs> you know, so it's that ability to cross over. Um, that's actually something we see, you know, speaking of higher education, where identities aren't just like one, you could have a student who also is part of the faculty, who's, you know, also a former <laughs> alum of a corresponding university that it, it's really weaving it all in. But knowing all that and enriching it really the customer is going to benefit it's not just a pain for them going this company knows all this information about me and they're not really doing anything with it so i think i think that's very much the theme of using data for the greater good you know that's definitely was jillian's message when we chatted in episode one as well and travel's an interesting one because it's one we can all think about and relate to i think mm -hmm. Speaking of, I, I'm just curious on that to, to hear about the different types of customers that Share ID has, because you've mentioned a few. I mean, it, I would say this, I say this uh, being uh, jovial, you know, is that all? Are there other customers that, that are, are kind of you wouldn't expect to come to Share ID that have surprised you? Boy, I, I think, you know, being starting out with a company with uh, no clients, just an idea. Uh, I feel like anybody who joins our platform uh, is a, you know, a treat. We had no idea what to expect coming in and, and our clients are smarter than us on how to use the technology uh, to their benefit. Uh, so there are, I think what really surprised us, Lucy, is you know, we're, we were a very small company out of Eugene, Oregon. We now have offices in, in London and presence in uh, Brazil, India, Japan, uh, uh, you know, have a, a big shiny office in, in Portland now. It's, it's amazing to me the, the size and scale of the brands who embrace personalization and identity. So, you know, the largest streaming companies music video streaming companies have have used or are using sheer id the problem that they had is students young people uh didn't pay for music didn't pay for video they just stole it or copied it or shared it with each other and these companies when they you know the cds and uh, were disappearing uh, how, and music streaming started, how do they then uh, protect the, the value of that, the artistry? And uh, since younger people were the primary, both consumers of music and, and uh, video streaming, as well as the potential buyers, they had to discount their pricing around the world and make it affordable to those folks to consume it. And so they used Sheer ID in order to ask people to verify that they are of certain age or they are enrolled in a university in order to qualify for a hugely discounted uh, price on the, on the music. Uh, and that really worked. And I think everyone was surprised that it worked. It worked from uh, the United States, from the United Kingdom to uh, you know, places, 190 uh, countries and, and territories around the world. I think that was, everybody was very surprised and very happy uh, that it worked and even more surprised that once they aged out of the discount program, about 90% of them then converted to pay full price. And that's where the brands made their money. They gave to engender not only loyalty and a, a commitment to that audience, but in return, that audience then you know, said, okay, we'll verify with you. But once they aged out, they graduated from college, they're now on their feet and they can afford full price, they all paid it. Uh, and so that was, that I think for us was one of those, will this really work? 
at scale, meaning, you know, <laughs> uh, around the world, then geez, it, it really did. Yeah, I think because that's a perfect example where it could have been like, right, well, let's just make our price point that low to get customers when really that's when you're assessing profiles and preferences and you're seeing that the age group that's not, you know, stereotypically in education have a higher propensity to pay. And therefore, how can we use technology to identify these different profiles and prove it? is the key here i think it's that verification that is the key message here you can you can look at demographics and that's their traditional way of thinking about it but there's so much more you can know about a customer but it's that proof of are we right are we getting people kind of tricking us so it's very interesting and i'm sure people listening in as well will have been access to a sheer it <laughs> um, okay. loyalty reward in some shape or form it leads me to a final question which is a tricky one i always kind of end these sessions with a little harder ones um and it's just because it's it's so relevant to identity verification i mean what are your thoughts on the topics of deep fakes and AI now that we're hearing so much more about, you know, how do you think that will influence your ID's direction or, you know, your opinion on the matter? Uh, it's a, it's a hugely interesting topic. And the more I think about it, the more I think that we all from a technology standpoint and a use case standpoint are just scratching the surface. Um, and it all it does all come back to verification and the consent of the individual being verified. So for Sheer ID, the first application that we see is helping us identify potential fraudsters versus uh, uh, actual buyers, actual uh, consumers. And uh, we have a, a very large data model because our clients are global. There's tens of millions of people who interact with our platform. So we're able to use AI to learn um, how to identify uh, uh, the intent of an individual. Um, I think the use case that I find striking and being around the Washington DC area, there's a lot of government uh, uh, entities here that are thinking of this. And one of the, AI examples that I hear is uh, AI could help a munition identified. So if a missile's coming at something, is that a tractor or is that a tank? Uh, and if it's a tractor, then maybe you should steer away from it. If it's a tank, uh, zero in. Or even on on uh, you know for law enforcement, could you verify that a car is speeding or potentially stolen? Uh, and then a police car then tells that car, I am actually a law enforcement officer and I have a reason to pull you over. Could that force that car to pull over and stop without the individual having any say about it? So there's all sorts of applications that involve mm -hmm. verification and the consent of the individual or non-consent of the individual that um, we're just scratching the surface of. And I, I think both has exciting uh, repercussions, Lucy, as well as pretty, pretty dangerous or scary. Alarming. Alarming. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, I I would totally agree. I think when, especially in in identity and access management, I think of deep fakes and AI, or I think of AI, and then I immediately think of deep fakes, and I immediately think of okay, what kind of content can we create to talk about the risks of artificial intelligence? And then meanwhile, when I'm out looking at what others are saying, it's really hailing the benefits of, okay, it might be, there's there's a risk of, of, of anything falling into the wrong hands being bad, but actually for the majority of time, how can we use this to, to, to be innovative and, and really unlock new possibilities? I mean, the things that I'm seeing <laughs> AI now facilitating. I mean, we just had Apple just did their updates and there's a lot of AI being pulled into that. We know Microsoft are doing that with Copilot, you know, seeing it pop up. It's, 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 it's cool. <laughs> but you think, you think, how am I? I mean, I think the latest update that was slightly alarming to me was that on the iPad, you write a, a formula and the minute you write equals, 
it gives you the answer. You don't have to figure it out yourself. <laughs> well, you have to think, well, wow, that's time. great, but. <laughs> well, I, the one of another example, Lucy, and I apologize for paddling, paddling on here, but Adobe is doing a great effort where if you take a picture or an image, it will automatically embed that it's a, a image taken by you at this place at this time. So if people want to know, is this a deep fake? Is this a real photo or is this doctored? You could then query, you can, you can verify that image uh, and instantly say, yep. And if you want to go more, you can say it was taken by Harry. It was on this date. And uh, so I think that was a very clever and innovative way that people can go about their, their business as they always have, but they've injected technology that gives confidence in content that perhaps we're becoming a little bit jaded now and saying, is that a deep fake? Is that really, is that uh, something else? So I, I think if, if companies can provide the tools where individuals can make the decision to know based upon verified information, is this real, is this not? Can I trust it? Uh, uh, that's the exciting part uh, for me that the AI and this technology is, will bring us. Absolutely agree. Yeah. Well, I, I, Harry, I could talk to you for for hours on end about all the possibilities, but um, for now we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today about all things loyalty, personalization, and the work that Sheer ID is doing. Uh, the, the opportunities, as we've said, are this type of identity verification are vast, and you said it. We're only just scratching the surface. As always, if anyone has any questions for Harry, please do reach out to harry at sheerid.com or visit the Sheer ID website, www.sheerid.com. We hope you enjoyed listening in today and stay tuned for more exciting discussions as we verify this.